Hello, everyone, and welcome to the EFG show. It is Thursday night. That means that myself, Stephen Dutzman, and Jeffrey Walker, the – I don't even know. I, I'm, I'm struggling with words today, Jeff. Jeff, you are from the frozen <laughs> north. You are one of the from community the managers north. for EngageFamilyGaming.com. Jeff, how are you? I am doing good, Stephen. How are you? Uh, I am as well as can be expected, considering it is the year 2020. So um, – yeah, so here we are. It is Thursday, and it was a relatively slow news week, but we are going to soldier on and uh, talk about what was announced, as well as uh, bring up some articles from EngageFamilyGaming.com where we talk about what we want from the next gen. But before we do that, I want to address one question that I'm sure at least a few people might be wondering, and that is um, why are we actually having a show this week? Um, a lot of content creators explicitly decided to go dark this week as a result of, you know, to show respect to the Black Lives Matter protests, and I certainly support those things. Um, I am... Uh, we decided to do something a little bit different than just going completely dark. Um, the podcast this week will not be airing. Uh, instead, I will be going on to our social media channels, and I will be – so tomorrow, throughout the day, I will be posting shout-outs and information to a number of black content creators. So uh, if you want to just keep an eye on our social channels tomorrow, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of people to follow, be it on Facebook or Twitter, etc., um, we have some podcasts, some YouTubers, just reviewers in general. Um, and yeah, it's going to be, you know, some useful information and some voices that you might not have known. Um, and maybe some voices that you have known, uh, because at least one of them has been on our show in the past. Uh, the EFG show, uh, I firmly believe, and Jeff agrees with me that this is kind of the show must go on largely because we made a commitment at the beginning of, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, or as we like to jokingly call it, the pandemic attacking, we made a commitment to be here to be a source of human connection for uh, some of our fans. And so we are doing that. And so I thought that it would be valuable for the two of us to come here and, you know, do our shtick and have a little bit of fun uh, because we know that there are some folks that need some escape and there we know there are folks who are isolated that need that human connection from uh, and and they need a, they need a good human connection and they somehow have to settle for me and Jeff. So um, <laughs> what would I be without a little bit of self-deprecating humor, Jeff? I know you've been trying to say something and I just wouldn't let you have a word in edgewise. Go ahead, Jeff. No, I, I'm just saying, yeah, it's very important how we're, you know, we're coming together and people look forward to to this and you know i did ask you earlier in the week if we were still doing the efg show but i think it's good you know all the bad that's going on in the world right now that we can be you know a light for people to look forward to yeah exactly and that's what we're going to do today uh so we're going to do all of our regular stuff tomorrow we're going to get down to the serious work and highlight um my kids are talking. My daughter doesn't want to go to bed, uh, and so she's coming down to get hugs from everybody, even though she did that already, and she was sent to bed 15 minutes ago. Um, hey, guys. Hey, guys. We're having, like, a serious moment. What are you going to do? We're doing this live. So, yeah. So, tomorrow we're going to do the hard work. Today, um, I appreciate you guys showing up. And, uh, you know, joining us for the EFG show. So, um, we got the serious stuff and the important stuff out of the way. Because at the end of the day, everything from here on out is shenanigans and chicanery, right? Like, we're just talking about silly. We're talking about pixels on screen and uh, a little bit of cardboard. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we're here to entertain. So, hopefully, Jeff and I are able to do that. Um, so, Jeff. One of your primary functions as part of Engage Family Gaming is you write a list of video games for families that come out during the week. You publish that on our, on the Engage Family Gaming Facebook page. You also uh, that is also converted into a blog post on EngageFamilyGaming.com. Jeff, why don't you tell us what video games came out this week? Yes, and it was like a little bit of a light week this week, which can be expected with. You know, a bunch of the delays we've had recently. But games that did come out this week, we have on Monday, June 1st, we had Do Not Feed the Monkeys for Switch. So I want to talk about this one for a moment. I actually watched 
because I was very curious as to what the heck this thing was. Uh, Do Not Feed the Monkeys is a really weird adventure game. I would encourage anyone that like really dug like Maniac Mansion back in the back in the back in the day to go give this one a look because it feels like it's got that style of humor, um, and it's an adventure game. I, I, don't, I don't know what it's about, but presumably it is about monkeys and not wanting and to And feed not them. feeding them. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> All right. So, All right. and then on Wednesday, June 3rd, we had Awesome P2 for the Xbox One and the Switch and Depth of Extinction for Xbox One and Switch. Thursday, June 4th, we had The Takeover on Switch and Tour de France 2020 on PS4 and Xbox One. I bet you that Tour de France game is, like, quietly like sick to death and just people don't play it because they don't necessarily like bicycle games. Like, I bet you it's just crazy good. I you mean, know? it's sponsored by the tour de France. I, I mean, I don't think they'd sponsor it without a, it being good. So I, if it ever came to game pass, I might try it, but I don't think it will, but you never say never. There's been some interesting things on there. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All right. So go on. Uh, and then tomorrow, Friday, June 5th, we have Bridge Strike on Switch, Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics on Switch, Cyber Protocol on Xbox One, Night Squad on Switch, Out Buddies DX on Xbox One and Switch, Pinball Lockdown on Switch, Rigid Force Redux on Xbox One and Switch, Strawberry Vinegar on Switch, The Sims 4 Eco Lifestyle DLC for PS4 and Xbox One, they came from the sky on Switch, and we were here together on Xbox One. And then on Saturday, June 6th, we had Potata Fairy Flower for Switch and Super Hollow Bunny's Paws Cafe for Switch. Then also on Friday, we did have one game I put on there for the grown-ups. Uh, if you have not played The Outer Worlds on Xbox One or PS4, it is coming to Switch tomorrow. Okay. So and from I... what I can see, it plays pretty well is what I've heard. Um, I've heard mixed reports, so mixed reports, okay. I think it's worth watching a YouTube video. Um, but if you don't have anyone else to play it, then, you know, this is a place. Um, I do want to talk about the 51 games yes. challenge, like the 51 games. Yeah, that's uh, my pick of the week, so. Yeah, um, and I agree. Here's some interesting facts that I learned this week about that game. Number one, what it has is 51 mini games. Many of them are like classic board game type situations like Othello and Chinese checkers and chess and regular checkers and Yahtzee, although it's yacht dice um, and, you know, whatever. Um, but apparently they are well implemented. It looks good. They're actually are pretty good at teaching you how to play the games, which I think is fairly interesting. But the real reason that I like this is it is a multiplayer game that is budget priced. It's priced at forty dollars. In fact, if you go thirty dollars if you go to Walmart. Yeah, if you go to Walmart, it's like thirty two bucks. Um, and it has the equivalent, essentially, of like what DS download play was on the DS and the three DS. Meaning, if you have multiple switches in your household. Uh, and you have one copy of that game, up to three other Switches can connect and play multiplayer games off of one cartridge. Um, and I think for multi-Switch households, which of which that number is growing, this is a pretty sound investment. So it feels like or, this is one of those... Go ahead. Or I was going to say, or even if you're just bringing your Switch to someone else's house who also has a Switch, you both don't need to own the game to, you know... Play Correct. each other in chess. Correct. I think this ultimately and becomes covering like over a, a small screen. Yeah, exactly. This feels like a pretty cool investment, uh, especially if you like playing some of these classic board games. And you know, it has some other stuff like you know, like combat tanks and you know, Rock'em Sock'em robots, golf, golf. You know, it's, which fun yeah. fact: if you read my article, the golf course in this game is based off of the original golf course from nes game golf that's actually a good fun fact um so like i said i think this is one of those this is quietly uh gonna be one of the the coolest games that we talk about throughout the rest of the year i'm picking it up tomorrow so uh and the goal is to kind of chip away at it and play it a bunch so i'll be able to give some impressions next week um and a review will go up on the site I have a feeling this is one of those games that's just going to end up on our gift guide at the end of the year where I'm like, listen, this isn't the game of the year by any stretch, but this is one of those 
you got to own it unless you are, like, absolutely against this style of game. Because I think it's just, you know, it's very cool. It's very wholesome. Um, and it's it's a game that you can play with a lot of different people. So I'm very interested in this. I cannot wait to bring it home tomorrow. So, yeah. Yeah, and, you, you know, when it came out, uh, when it was announced in that Nintendo Direct, I don't think a lot of, a lot of people just kind of waved it off to the side, not thinking, but then as more people looked into it, the more and more they got excited about it. And yeah. that's kind of how I did. I did until I saw other content creators that I listened to or watched talking about it. And I, I probably won't get it on tomorrow, but I'll get, it's on my list of games. I want to get eventually. Yeah. I, I, realistically, I'm getting it tomorrow just because uh, we have work to do, Jeff, and I have to make a sacrifice, you know, sacrifices must be made for the children and we're going to find out because I have a feeling that this is going to be cool also I am a three switch household so having oops, excuse me um, having a game that uh, all three of my kids can play all at once um, on their individual switches I think that's a really cool idea so anyway so that's the release list this week we did not have any uh, PS Plus or Xbox um, games with gold announcements that was last week um, so that moves us into our next topic which is the Switch Online game ranking. So, the list as it stands so far is City Connections and then Eliminator Boat Duel. Yes. That's it. So, right now, the best video game on the Nintendo Switch Online service is City Connections. You got to pick this week, um, and you picked Wild Guns. And uh, so, why don't you start? Tell us. How'd you feel about Wild Guns? So, for those who have not played Wild Guns, Wild Guns is a cowboy robot game. Okay. You are a cowboy, and you shoot at robots. It's essentially an arcade shooter. Like, it really made me think of uh, one game that comes to mind I would play in, like, the arcades when I was growing up, like, preteen ages. Area 51, did you ever play that, Steven? In the arcades, yes, 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 yes. Absolutely, I did. Yes. So, um, so that's what it is. It's, a, it's an on-rails shooter, essentially, without the rails, because you don't really move as you go. You, Your enemies show up on a stationary background. Uh, but, I mean, I thought it was fun. I will say I didn't – I beat it not as the way it was originally intended because it's a really hard game. Mm-hmm. But I did beat it by using save states. I was able to see the credits, which made me kind of a little, at least a little proud of myself. Good, good. Um, so I played it also. I did not see the end credits. Uh, I, it did not take me long to really kind of get my, um, kind of get my get my fill of the game. Um, I played it for like about an hour and a half. Uh, I used the rewind feature as opposed to save states. And got the same effect. Uh, I played. Did you play as the guy or the girl? I played as the I girl. I played. I played as the guy. Okay. So uh, I thought it was cool. I mean, you know what it felt like? It felt like Space Harrier, only you're not flying, because you're running around on the ground and you have like a double jump, and it's you know it's kind of cool. Um, it almost I, made me think of those uh, those levels from Contra where you're going toward away, mm-hmm. like down the tunnels instead yeah. of the side scrollers. Absolutely. And, you know, I thought it was cool. I mean, it was a fun, it, it was a fun experience. Yeah. Um, you know, do, am I super hungry to play it again? No. However, um, the, the one thing that I don't think either of us really did is that this is a two player simultaneous game. Yeah. I so, would not have been able to get my wife to play with me. So, uh, my, I was hoping to, but the, the, uh, the kiddos were busy doing other stuff and the general was making dinner while I was doing this. So. Uh, but I, I'm going to give it another spin with them and see if the multiplayer part is a little bit more fun because I love cooperative multiplayer games like this. You know, one of us could be the guy, one of us could be the girl, and we can work together and see if there's any kind of cool strategies we can use. Um, I thought it was I, – I will say this. I thought it was fine. Natsume did a good job. Is it my favorite game I've ever played? No. Um, I, I Is it better than – here's my real point. Is it better than Eliminator Boat Duel? Yes. Is it better than City Connections? No, I don't think so. I think it is better than City Connection. (laughs) I mean... 
<laughs> so, so here we are. We're we're at a bit of a standoff. Um, I mean, it's a fine video game, Jeff, but like you know, it doesn't have like that NES magic. It's just it's just a kind of a derivative. I mean, if you look at it, they're both based off of arcade games, and I think it did a. I mean, they're both arcade like, and I don't know. I had a lot more fun playing Wild Guns than I did City Connection. After about and to be fair, you didn't know how to play City Connection. I didn't know how to play Wild Guns either, and I figured it out. I mean. Yeah, that's fair. All right, you know what? So I was able to figure, because I will say the hardest thing about Wild Guns is having to realize that you cannot move the reticule of where your gun is shooting and yourself at the same time. Well, that's the part that actually really kind of bothered me about it, because I really, you know, like, because the idea, folks, is that you're moving around the screen, right, and you have a targeting reticle, but you, you can't directly control the targeting reticle. It's not like Space Harrier where you're moving and a t- like kind of like a twin stick shooter. You're moving, but you're moving the targeting reticle. So you could dodge and shoot up or vice versa or shoot straight. No, it's just depending on where you are, that's where it aims. You can't do that. Um, so, I all right, how about this? Because it was intuitive enough to be able to figure out how to play without instructions, I will concede that it is better than City Connection. Okay. I'm not... But I'm not happy about it. Hey, I wasn't happy last week. Um, well, yeah, but Eliminator Boat Duel was just not good. <laughs> and City Connection was at least better than not good. Um, so, right? So, I mean, I think we have some nostalgia glasses on for that. But, well, I mean, you're, you're conceding. I won't argue any farther. Yes. But I will say, yes, you are right that not being able to move, I mean... There was one level that I played today where I had so much shooting at me mm-hmm. that I was just literally just jumping, waiting for the timer to get off. Because as soon as I landed, something else was shooting, and you can't shoot while you jump. That is frustrating. Correct. Correct. So, all right. So we have decided it now. For everybody that, for everybody that wants to know, definitively, right now, as of this week, the best game on the Nintendo Switch Online service is... Wild Guns, followed by City uh, Connection, followed by Eliminator Boat Duel. I mean, at this rate, every game keeps getting better. I think we are going to hit our limit eventually. I mean, we'll get there. Um, eventually, something is not going to be as good as the best game on the service. So here's where we go. Um, I say, because I get to choose now. You chose Wild yep. Guns. Um, I'm going to bring it back. Again, the rules are... Just for you guys, we're, what we're doing is we're alternating choosing games, either SNES or NES, on the Switch Online that we're going to play each week. Y'all can play with us, and um, and then what we are going to what we are doing is just we are ranking them as we go. So we've only done three, so this is not so much of a, a very challenging discussion right now. But obviously, it's going to get way more complicated when we're talking about ranking like thirty and forty games. Yep. So uh, I choose. We have to choose, and what we've agreed on is for the first eight weeks. So we're three weeks in. We will choose no games that have a character in Super Smash Brothers, uh, which limits a lot, and that's done intentionally so that we don't just cheat and play all the Super Mario Brothers games. We want to save some of that heat for later. So, especially um, when we save those games, if we play an especially bad game, we'll know we're looking towards a good game the next week. Correct. My recommendation, this is my choice. My choice, next week, we're playing pro wrestling. Pro, okay, on the NES. Pro wrestling on the NES, we're doing this, guys. Starman, King Kong Karn, we're doing it. So, okay. folks, if you have Nintendo Switch and you have Nintendo Switch Online, uh, go to the NES app and you can look up pro wrestling. You can play it with us and come back next week for the EFG show and we will talk about it. Um, you knew exactly what I was talking about when I talked about pro wrestling. I knew. I was waiting I was waiting for that. Um, I made. I forgot the game was even like, you know, something. I completely forgot the game was on there. So, listen. Um, I main Starman. I just want to let you know, um, because the Starman kick is just insane, and he's the closest to Rey Mysterio on the thing. So, um, and I stand before Rey Mysterio Mysterio was even a thing. (laughs) 
Well, yeah, but they had masked wrestlers back then. I mean, I mean, yeah, he's based off a of luchador. So. Yeah. So, um, okay. So that is all right. Let's see here. So Allison, um, she said she enjoyed City Connections after our referral. Uh, so she can't wait to play Wild Guns and pro wrestling. There you go. We've we have not steered you wrong, Allison. So far, eventually we're gonna play a stinker. I mean, it's just bound to happen. But so far, we've all been playing okay stuff. So okay, so that's the rankings. Um, this week, Pokemon Sword and Shield gave us there was a release of a trailer. Yes. For Pokemon Sword and Shield for the DLC is this is the Isle of Armor first, right? Yep, the Isle of Armor. So uh, you watched and you read and you did the thing. Tell me, Jeff, what's up with the Isle of Armor? All right, so they didn't really announce much, so I will be just giving some snippets of what we have learned. Mm -hmm. Uh, So the Isle of Armor is going to be released on June 17th. Now, it was really confusing if you heard us, if you saw the Facebook post about Pokemon News and then couldn't find it. You're not alone because it was a Japanese only event. I don't, they didn't post it on. And I don't know if the whole Black Tuesday was the reason they didn't announce why, but I could not find it on Nintendo's YouTube page. I could not find it on Pokemon's YouTube page. Looks like they posted the English one today because I got a notification of it uh, like a little bit, a little while ago, but I didn't see it specifically. Okay. I haven't really had time to go through YouTube today, so maybe it was on there. But so it was really confusing. I'm I'm guessing it has to do with the whole, but they just didn't announce that was the reason. Uh, so if you couldn't find it on Tuesday after we said it was going to be there, it's because they did stuff without telling anyone. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, but pretty eventually, much. other places shared it. So let's see. Uh, they showed the two new Reggie Pokemon's Reggies. So we have Regi Draco, which is a dragon type, and Regi Elecky, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it, which is an electric type. So if you've played Pokemon, the Regis are these. They're golems. Okay. They're golems. So I know there's, you know, there's a normal type and a rock type, and I honestly, I cannot remember their names right now. I should. Uh, they also announced more information about um, the Galarian forms of the original legendary birds. So Galarian Articuno is going to be psychic and flying. Galarian Zapdos is going to be fighting and flying. And Galarian Moltres is going to be dark and flying. Sure. Sounds so, right. They look really cool. Like, look them up. Uh, I... I don't know. Moltres has always been my favorite legendary bird, but Articuna looks really cool in its Galarian form. Uh, then they announced that Galarian Slowbro is going to be poison and psychic type. <laughs> I'm a huge Slowbro fan. Um, so poison Slowbro sounds great. I mean, I'm looking at a picture. It's really cool because like the shelter is now on his hand, so he literally just punches with shelter. Yeah, sounds about right. So, so that looks really cool. Um, you, if you look, there's new official artwork of Gigantamax Venusaur and Gigantamax Blastoise. Yep. Then I, the end of the three, and that's about all they announced. They didn't really yeah, announce I am, much. I, I am actually. Uh, Allison is looking for me to screen share. I. It's almost like she was looking at my screen even though i can't screen i can't like she can't see it um because i am uh because i was looking for the article um or not the article the actual trailer um so i'm doing it i promise uh bear with me for a moment i'm trying to get to the actual pokemon channel so we don't like oh and kate thank you for giving the names of the reggie Oh. Regist Regice and Regirock. Oh, it is actually reflecting on my glasses. Good job, Kate. You're like a psychic. <laughs> um, let's see here. You guys are very observant. Yeah. Um, he's the one with the uh, screen share stuff, so he's the only one who can share pictures. Otherwise, it's I would. It's true. I'm pretty much the only one. Um, because you know, it, 
I'm the one that pays for the software, so I get stuck with the hard <laughs> stuff. Um, let's see here. Hope you all don't oh, mind. While so he's looking with up them for a little bit while I do the work. Hold on. Other new stuff that's coming up is um, there's a new feature called the Galar Star Tournament in Winden, which I believe is the big central city you go to. Uh, in this, you play multi battles against various characters from the story. And that is about all the new stuff. Come on. I can't find the, okay, wait, the official Pokemon YouTube channel. Is that actual? No, of course not. It's not. Are, are you trying to find the trailer? Yeah, but I'm trying to find it. A Game Explain had the Japanese one posted. That's where I finally was able to watch it. So Rob says, I got to say it, Pokemon should only be based off of real animals like the early games and not off of objects. I mean, they Rob, still have... I, I, let's just say you're talking to a huge Pokemon fan, and a lot of the... Or, uh, Geodude was just a rock, so that's not a real animal. I mean, to be fair... <laughs> wait, hold on. To be fair, in Pokemon Sun and Moon, they had a ghost sandcastle. I mean, yes, but they have just literal ghosts, too, in the original. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I've grown up playing Pokemon since I was 10 years old. That's how old I was when the first games came out. So and you've been I playing the... them for, like, six years, is what you're saying. <laughs> Rob says what someone's saying. I, I'm, I'm just being... Listen, I can't now. argue with Rob. With that said... <laughs> They're, uh, Rob and Allison, I gotta tell you, your profile pictures, while they are wonderful, they're very confusing for me because they look very similar. Um, <laughs> and so it was very confusing because I was like, what did Allison do? Did I break it? And then I was like, nope, I didn't do anything. They're just actually using two phones today. Um, thank you for watching <laughs> the EFG and giving us two viewers. Um, this keychain Pokemon, listen, I bet you if we, like all the people in the chat and me and Jeff went through... Like, there's an ice cream cone Pokemon. There's, yes. Uh, there's a Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield that is literally a walking pile of whipped cream with a strawberry on top of it. I mean, there's some I will weird say, Pokemon. though, Sword and Shield had some really good designs of Pokemon this, this generation. I mean, I'm not saying the ice cream one is bad. I'm just saying it's kind of ridiculous. Okay, so uh, I guess we're just gonna have to watch the one on IGN. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> um, I was hoping to. As not. I said, they made it really hard to find. They really freaking did. All right, so we've got the. Um, let me bring it up. Let me get through the. Ad. All right, so we're going to screen share. Pretty sure I can do that. Okay, here we go. Sorry, Jeff, you can't hear any of this. Seen already, so I'll just... No, I've seen here. Can you guys get the audio? Can someone in the chat just tell me? This is a long trailer, though. It was about three minutes? Yeah. Okay, good. And obviously you heard me because you heard me talk. Thanks, guys. Was that a bull with an afro? It's definitely a bull with an afro. Slow bro is my new favorite. <laughs> and that's Gundam Wing Blastoise right there.
That's a big old one. Two Reggies, I think, look really cool, and like the Larry yeah. just warms up the legendary bird. Yeah. Sorry, because I can only watch this in the time for like two <laughs> Absolutely. All right, here we go. All right, we did it. Yeah, and so just remember you can buy, it's $30, $29.99, and you get both the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra, which is supposed to come out this fall. Um, if you have multiple copies of, like, you have to buy it separately for Sword and Shield. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it works for, like, if you uh, buy it for one copy of Sword, if it works for another copy of Sword, if you have multiple kids in the house, multiple versions. Yeah, we're not sure about that. I'm actually hoping to dig in. Uh, we'll know more information about that next week. I'm probably going to write, like, an article about how to deal with the DLC um, and investigating all that because there's there's a lot to know. Um because, for example, you know, we, you know, uh, Susie, she does, um, you know, she did a, the Legend of Zelda concert on our page uh, last year. And we might be doing another one. I guess spoilers. Um, is doing a, uh, like, her and her husband bought two copies of the game, but, but they bought physical copies and they're kind of swapping the cartridges. So now their question is, like, do they have to buy two copies of the DLC like won't you know so that they can you and and so they're not really sure how all that works like do they, they both have, have two same, copies of the dlc for, do they for, both have the same version no they bought two they bought sword and shield and are both so, playing both sword and shield yeah okay so sword if i know you have to buy one copy of the dlc for sword and one copy for shield mm -hmm. but does the but the issue is they have two switches and Sword and Shield that they are playing on both switches. So the question is, yeah. do they have to buy four copies of the DLC essentially? Like they don't they're going to we're going to figure it out. I think it probably the answer to that is no and you're probably going to have to buy the DLC like once and share it through the but I don't know, we're going to find out. Yeah. So cuz this is buying DLC linked to a specific game, specifically like a specific version of a game is some is unknown territory for the switch. So not really sure uh, how it will work, but we're going to investigate it. We're on the case. Uh, we have a little bit of time before the 17th, so we will find out. So everybody can get ready. Um, so that is Pokemon sword and shield. Hope everybody liked that three minute trailer. Listen, um, everybody that's on the internet that says that game doesn't look good. I have no idea what is wrong with you. Um, yeah, whatever, like, if you compare it to, like, The Last of Us Part Two or whatever, it's not quite that great. But come on, guys. It, that, that game is super cool and very fun-looking. And you, as Rob said, there's a Pokemon like a keychain. So, I mean, <laughs> that sounds fun to me. Um, and so, all right. So, next, the Game Gear Micro got announced this week. And it was just a wet fart. Jeff, just tell us, just just fill us in. So last week, Sega announced they had some amazing reveal for their 60th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and rumors just started spreading. Oh, are they going to announce a new Sonic game? Which is usually what they like to do during their big anniversaries. Or are they going to bring back a game from the past? Are they going to... I. Are they going to do a Dreamcast Mini? You know, just all these different ideas. And then Sega comes out and says, we're going to do a Game Gear Mini. And you're thinking, oh, that's cool. We'll do a Game Gear Mini. And then Sega reveals that our, it's going to be a Game Gear Micro. No, it doesn't hook to your TV. You are playing on an inch and a half, a one and a half inch screen. Like, oh, well, I guess I can make that work. Then they announce, oh, and there's going to be four different types, and each type is going to have four different games. Like, it just kept getting worse and worse. And so just to 
reveal what's going to be. So there's four different Game Gear micros coming out. Uh, you can get the original black color, and it's going to have Sonic the Hedgehog, Puyo Puyo 2, Outrun, and Royal Stone. You can get a blue variant. That Game Gear is going to have Sonic Chaos, Gunstar Heroes, Sylvan Tail, and Baku Baku Animal. Uh, you're going to have a yellow Game Gear, and it's going to have Shining Force, Gaiden, Ensei, Joshino... I... You can do it. You can do it. I believe Joshino you. Kuni, hey? Sorry, I do not speak Japanese, unless you want me to say very short phrases. Uh, <laughs> Shining Force, the Sword of Haya, Shining Force Gaiden, Final Conflict, and Nazu, Nazo Puyo Aruru no Ru. Uh, and then there's a red version, which will have Revelations, the Demon Slayer, the Gummy, the Gaiden, Last Bible Special, the Gigi Shinobi, and Columns. Now, these are only coming out in Japan right now. They have not revealed them to come out in the United States. But you can buy each of these for approximately $50. Yeah. But, wait, there's more. You can buy all four of them for approximately $250, and which, actually, now that I'm looking at it, that's not a good deal. And you get a magnifier with it, which means another an extra $50 for that magnifier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Th- yeah, everybody, sorry about the audio glitch there. I'm going to have to figure this out because I, char- I plugged my phone into my computer so I can charge it, and I was looking for something for the next segment, and uh, just don't use Twitter right now if you don't want auto video plays of awful, awful things. So I apologize for that. Super embarrassed. I was looking for something for the next segment, um, trying to multitask. Um, and here I am just looking super sheepish. So sorry about that, guys. Um, all right, Game Gear. Good thing I can't hear because I just kept going. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, you, you kept going. But everybody else, unfortunately, was stuck with it. Um, I guess that's good to know that I can do that if I want to do something cool, um, like play our podcast or something. But, okay. So, uh, the Game Gear Micro. Um, Man, so are you going to buy one of these? No. I mean, I'm not a Sega person anyway. I And for $50, it's not worth it. I mean, I... So, my... One of my friends growing up had a Game Gear, and all I remember is, well, for one, him barely letting me play. And when he did play, it would just die. Like, in a one and a half inch screen, I mean. Yeah, I'm not going to play a role playing game. Like, Shining Force is well, one of my favorite games. I love Shining Force. It's like the only Sega game that I actually really like. And there is just no chance I'm playing that on an inch and a half screen. Like, the more yeah, I think I'm, about it, I'm like, that's just too tiny. People were complaining that Fire Emblem Three Houses was had too small print. Imagine playing on if it was on a inch and a half screen. And exactly. I looked it up because I was curious. The Game Boy Micro, which was pretty much the final iteration of the Game Boy Advance, it had a two inch screen, so it was a half an inch bigger than this. Yeah, I mean these are clearly meant to be collector's items. Um, that right now they're announced for Japan. They're not even really announced for a Western release, but obviously we could buy that if we wanted. Um, this is... Megan, what are you doing down here? We are doing this live, folks, and we have a daughter <laughs> who doesn't want to go to bed and, yeah, has, here. and knows that I'm trapped. Uh, so, yeah, so I do think these are for collectors, but you can still do collector's things and make them worth it. I mean, Nintendo's... I mean, they had the the Genesis Mini, and it was amazing. I mean, I haven't played one, but it had an amazing list of games. So I just don't understand putting four games on a system for $50. I could go and get, what was it, 40 games on the Genesis Mini for $80? Yeah, pretty much. Or yeah. my 21 games on my SNES Mini for $80. The NES had 30 games for $60. This is four games for $50. Yes. Um, I, I hate to say I even think the PlayStation Mini is a little more worth it than these. 
I, I all right. I'm not gonna go that far because <laughs> the PlayStation Mini, not that great. Um, no, it's not. But this is this is really like I can't imagine. Like, let's say they make a million of these, which I I can't imagine that they are. But let's say they make a million of these. I bet less than a hundred thousand of them actually get played. Like, I bet the vast majority of these that are purchased are going to be kept in the box and put on a shelf. And I mean, yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, most of these miniature consoles, very rarely do they get played. I mean, I have the SNES Mini is the only one I own. It's only been played a handful of times. It sits plugged into my downstairs TV, but I haven't played it in I don't know how long. It is just kind of a cool little collector's thing Yeah, at this point. Absolutely. For me, the PlayStation Mini is a Funko Pop of a PlayStation. That's really what it is. So, uh, so that's the Game Gear Micro. What a mess! If you want to see what they look like, just look them up. It's they're these tiny little things. I think the Game Boy. Here's what's weird: it's a miss because the Game Gear did have some interesting games, right? Like, at the very least, there are a bunch of people that would absolutely want that system. So it doesn't make sense to me that they wouldn't just make a real one just put out like a real game. yeah just put all these together put it on like a three and a half four inch screen like i mean look at the time the game you came out at that time the only handheld in the market was the game boy i mean unless you count the atari Lynx, but no one really played that yeah um the game boy and Game Boy was still, you know, monochrome green. And then all of a sudden this game, this is why I thought it was so cool when my friend had it because it's like, wow, this is handheld and this is in color. Yeah. And then you realize you're changing the battery. The It took six AA batteries, right? And that gave you like three hours of playtime or something. Yeah. It was just absurd. Maybe a little so, bit more than that, but. So, you know, people complain the, sw- the original Switch having three to four hours of battery life. Imagine having a system with three to four hours of battery life, but every time you had to buy six new AA batteries. Yeah, in the early 90s. Yeah, so, my parents didn't even like buying, getting the four AA batteries for my Game Boy, and that would last eight to 12 hours. Yeah, it was. it's a, it's a mess. Uh, it is a big-time mess. So that is the Game Gear Micro. Um, I want to talk a little bit of board gaming news. Uh, we don't do that very often here on the EFG show, but... Uh, I can't help myself, folks. Um, we had a pretty cool announcement today, and uh, I did not want to miss that one. Um, so let's see here. Let me go ahead and bring that up. Um, so I'm bringing it up, and it should be loading now. Um, we had the announcement of Marvel Splendor. Um, and so I am so excited for that game. I'm going to put that over my face. So, uh, for those watching, okay. So Splendor is a engine building game where you are playing a, where you are, uh, kind of drafting these gems and, you know, building piles of gems. And then as you get certain combinations of gems, you are able to buy, uh, these cards that, these cards that you put in front of you kind of represent a permanent gem in your collection, which means that moving forward, you you always have that gem in play. So you can just, over time, just start buying more and more and more of these cards, and they have victory points. It's great. Um, they're tweaking the rules a little bit, and um, the gem theme works perfectly with the Infinity Stones. So Marvel Splendor is going to be great. Uh, because Splendor is great, so it's really hard to screw up a really good game. Cannot wait. It's coming out later this year. I will be playing it. There will be a review for it. And, yes, I am. So that's it. That's all I got. It was it, Marvel Splendor. And man, I've never played cool. Splendor, so. you never played Splendor? No. Oof. It plays very well with two players. Well, we, we have to put a stop to our game by. We have all these games now that we don't have time to play. We just bought Fireball Island, so. That's fair. That's fair. But Fireball Island is really more just, like, kind of dumb fun. This is cerebral, you know? Like, your wife's an, an intellectual, you know, unlike you. So. Oh, thank you. That's all right. I mean, come on. It's fine. It's fine. I didn't mean that in a bad way. I meant in, in a, <laughs> you know. So, 
you can play with marbles and she can play with like the intellectual engine building game it's cool um so that is so that's that board game i mean fine it, you don't have to buy it you spend enough money on video games um, yeah so though it is marvel theme like Maybe I should just not play the original, just go straight to Marvel Splendor. And I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I think there's a lot of people that are going to do that. I, Splendor is great. I've never played the original Talisman, and I have Kingdom Hearts Talisman. So. Well, hold on, though, because that's because it's Kingdom Hearts. I bet you if they made a Kingdom Hearts toaster, you would buy it. Tell if me that you wouldn't buy if a Kingdom it burnt Hearts the, toaster. If it burnt, like, Sora's face into my bread, yes, I would buy it. If it did, like, the heart thing. Yeah. <laughs> of course you would. Of course you would. Allison, you're watching this. Tell me, do you think that this man would not buy a Kingdom Hearts toaster? Um, throw that in the chat. Rob, too. Um, at this point, Kate knows you well enough. I'm sure she'll have an opinion <laughs> on whether or not you would buy a Kingdom Hearts toaster. So uh, so that's Marvel Splendor. Um, Jeff, I like saving money. Do you like saving money? I love saving money. So uh, what if I told you that right now on PlayStation 4 and on the Epic Game Store on PC – um, Allison, by the way, said he so would. Thank you, Allison. <laughs> I appreciate the confirmation. Um, I knew and then I'd, I'd be bringing Kingdom Hearts toast to everyone at work. It'd be great. I, w- I would demand that you find a way to ship some to me. Um, I'd frame it in a nice little shadow box. Um, okay, so Sony Days of Play. I actually brought this up because the if you own a PlayStation 4 right now is a great time to get caught up on some of the exclusives that you very likely missed. So, for example, and I'm literally just going down the list, uh, Spider-Man, which was our game of the year last year. Was it last year? Oh, Rob, no, 2018. Was, was it 2018? Man. Our game of the year in 2018, Spider-Man, that's how long ago, and it's the game of the year edition, uh, is $20. <laughs> that is... Oh, wow. Jenna's watching, and Jenna's coming in with the heat said uh she said dude you give him a hard time about kingdom hearts but you'd buy a final fantasy t- a final fantasy 10 toaster you know what i'm gonna say this right now you are damn right i would buy a titus toaster and um and i if it put like a blitz ball right on the toast i would get that i would eat egg sandwiches on it every day <laughs> so she's calling me out um i'm saying somebody make a final fantasy 10 toaster and then i will buy it um so the Spider, so this is Spider Man Game of the Year edition. Does it include the DLC? Oh, and it includes the DLC. This is a great value, Spider Man. I will go out there and say Spider Man is my first ever, not counting Telltale Games, platinum trophy. That is how much I loved that game. Wow, you platinumed it? I platinumed it. I mean, I will be honest. That means I good bought video the games. DLC. I never played all the DLC. I have a, me and DLC and I have a weird relationship where once I've beaten a game, it's hard for me to go back to it unless I'm going to replay it again. Yeah. So a lot of times I don't buy DLC because it's hard for me to go back to a game. I get it. And I was playing, I think I played the first two uh, DLCs and they really ramped up the difficulty. So I never got to the third DLC, but yes, I platinumed the original Spider. My only platinum. That's not a telltale game. Or... Lego Harry Potter on the Xbox 360 because I did get all 1,000 gamer points on that one. <laughs> Man, you just outed yourself as, like, the biggest story. 1,000 <laughs> um, gamer points, Lego Harry Potter. Okay, so um, some other stuff that is – so how about so this is not for the grown-ups, but I'm just going to – or not for the kids, but I'm just going to throw this out there. If, if you're one of those folks that's like, you know what, that Witcher show was good. So maybe I want to play the video game. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is $12 right now. So, Great game. Yeah. So let me listen. It is not in any way for children. So this is definitely one for the grown-ups, but it's 10 o'clock. We're past the, the kid-friendly hour. Let me tell you, The Witcher 3 is an immaculate video game. For me, The Witcher 3 is a Legend of Zelda game. It plays very similar to that. You're opening abilities, you're exploring, you're doing stuff. But, like, there's questionable content for a family. It's definitely earns its M rating in a number of ways. You find out the M rating that it earns within five minutes of starting the game, but this game is hundreds of hours long. There's so many side quests and so many different things. It's $12. And that will come with the two DLCs, no, which... No, it does not. 
because this is oh, this isn't the game of the year edition. This is just the regular edition of the game. Okay. I'm confirming to see if it includes the DLCs. No, the complete edition, which includes those, is fifty dollars. That's still a great value in and of itself because the three DLC it's packs were so... each thirty bucks. Huh, that's interesting because I bought Witcher Three the complete edition because I got all the DLC for like ten dollars like two years that's ago. That's also been on sale, but this is just the base game that's on sale. Okay. That's one thing they've done with The Witcher is sometimes that the original version with no DLC is on sale. Sometimes the complete edition is on sale, and they re- they like swap them. Um, for me, I never played any of the DLC. I play. I ba- I didn't finish the first game. I uh, have told this story on other grown up podcasts before, but I had a very specific story. Uh, I played it after a her- after a uh, hernia surgery, so I played for like three days. Got freaked out by some spooky quests at nighttime because I am a coward. Um, but I had a very sp- I, he had a relationship. He fell in love. There, she betrayed him, and then I was like, you know what? He's retiring to the woods. That's the story of my Witcher. Um, so really, it's because I got s- scared at night. So um, some other stuff. By the way, if you want to play FIFA, FIFA's ten bucks also. Um, so let's see here. I know there was some other, uh, Concrete Genie, which if you're looking for a review of that game, uh, it's about bullying. Let's see. Uh, Rob has a question and I, Rob, I will get to your question about, uh, the Witcher and the Netflix series in a moment. Uh, Concrete Genie, uh, it's a game about bullying. Uh, it's a very cool artistic game. There's a review on engagefamilygaming.com written by one of our community managers, Mike Malconian. Uh, who has been very helpful as far as producing content for us recently. That game is about $12 right now. Uh, definitely worth bu- worthwhile buy. Uh, Rob, Sh- Rob Schmidt says, I never had a chance to play the Witcher games. Always wanted to. How accurate is the Netflix series of The Witcher to the game? So here's what's really interesting. The Witcher is based on books that were written in Polish. And so uh, the CD Projekt Red bought the license to The Witcher books to make the games. And so The Witcher 3, the one that everybody talks about, is the third game in the series, and it's kind of been evolving. The first one is almost like a tactical role-playing game, and now this one is just a full-on action RPG. Um, so the show is actually based on the books, so it's more accurate to the books than it is to the game. But However, they took the visual look from the games. Correct. However... They absolutely decided to go with the the aesthetics. So, like, you know, Henry Cavill looks like Geralt and talks like Geralt from the game. Geralt. Geralt? Did yes. I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable? Um, you did. All right, so whatever. I, I the, the Witcher. Um, everybody that I talked to <laughs> so, just called And I realize I may have just sounded like a jerk there. I'm just giving him a hard time because before we went live, he was – Making fun of me for my mispronunciation of you, Sarab- Mr. Pokemon <laughs> called it Sarabi.net. And I was like, what is wrong with you? So, I mean, listen, I'm not Mr. Witcher. So, but that's okay. It's fine. Uh, we're all friends here, uh, mostly. So, I think we're both tired and cranky today. We're giving each I'm bored. I'm bored and confrontational, is what I am. I'm not really bored, actually. We're, we're having a good show. <laughs> so, um, lots of good stuff. Uh, get God of War is fifteen dollars. Also, so basically, uh, there's lots of good games. Um, Epic Game Store right now, Overcooked Two is the free game, uh, and that is it's. Is it Overcooked Two? I thought it was the original. No, Overcooked. It's just the original the Overcooked. So if you ever wanted to play a game on your PC where you get to yell at your family, that's it. Yeah, it's stressful and you will get mad. My wife and I tried to play Overcooked once, and I felt myself, I felt the rage within me welling up, and I was like, I'm not supposed to have a rage meter? Like, what happens when this goes off? So, uh, we haven't played it since, but um, it, it, I'm sure it's fun. The, uh, let's see here. Oh, my wife loves it. That's what's so weird about it, is that she loved every second of it. Um, so, Witcher 3 is on sale, f- is on sale on the PS4 for 12 bucks or whatever. Kate, specifically, you you should play this game. I think you would absolutely love it. It is dark and Eastern European, and, like, he's grumpy, and he's killing, like, really spoopy monsters. And, I mean, there's some trigger warning on some stuff, but, man, is he... 
I mean, it's twelve bucks. The, you know, it's definitely yeah. worth it. It's worth twelve bucks. It's worth twelve bucks, and then, and then wait we get until a the chance, get, yeah, get the DLC on sale. The DLC, I haven't yeah. gone very far into DLC, but it's about as much as a full game, is what people say. I know, I know, Kate. I know. Like when I thought, when I think, I'm surprised you hadn't played it. Because you know it's Eastern European, and I know you enjoy Eastern European folklore and you know like that style. Um, so I think you would like it. I honestly would have. Yeah, we have it on the PS4, so I don't have to buy it. But um, the and when I bought it, it was twenty dollars, and I thought that was outright theft. And now it's twelve dollars. I, I mean, it's not like I wish I saved it, but um, it is. So yeah, Kate, I'm surprised you hadn't played it. Um, Kate is has put in many hundreds of hours on Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, so I'm sure she's looking for another game to sink her teeth into once the uh, Breath of the Wild subsides. So, anyway, um, Epic Game Store also has a lot of cool sales. One thing that is worth mentioning is they're giving everyone a ten dollar gift card, basically. So you get a ten dollar coupon that you can use on any game that is over fifteen bucks. And so there are a lot of choices for fifteen dollar games. Um, just looking at the Epic Game Store, just eyeballing it, like Journey to the Savage Planet, which is a relatively new game. It's like a Metroidvania type thing. It's kind of like a funnier uh, Metroid Prime. is seventeen ninety nine. So getting that for seven bucks is a pretty good deal. Um, you know, Before We Leave is an interesting looking strategy game. That's twenty dollars. Getting that for ten would be even better, etc. Lots of cool stuff on there. So I would encourage um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and this is one for the grown-ups, is $19.79. So getting Assassin's Creed Odyssey on your PC for less than $10 is outright theft. So it's definitely worth taking a look. Um, Kate is the undisputed master of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild among the EFG community. Um, so, uh, yeah, she, she knows her stuff. So, um, yeah, so those are the sales. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. And um, so you need something to do, Kate. So I might grab that Witcher game and download it and leave it there for when you're done. Um, okay. So I think we did it, Jeff. We did it. We did it. This is one more episode of the EFG show. We were, and we're just going to have to punt this until we have a chance to talk about it. Until and news dies down. Until news <laughs> dies down, you know, like never. Because next week we're going to have like three conferences to talk about because we have stuff this weekend. And then EA Play is literally next Thursday. So Lord knows we got lots of stuff to talk about. The next, if you have been watching us now, I would encourage you, um, set a reminder. We actually have an event in the Engage Family Gaming Facebook page. Mark it that you're going so you get a reminder. Um, we are going to be going over all the family-friendly video game news that comes out of all of these E3-like events over the course of the entire summer. So this is going to be a great place to stop, get caught up, and listen to Jeff and I make fun of ourselves and each other and um, share and help pick and choose the stuff that you care about from a family gaming perspective. Don't worry about it towards the tail end. We'll talk about all the other stuff too. Um, but since E3 isn't happening, right? Like last year and in years prior, there was E3. It was only one week and everything happened over that course of like four or five days. Since that's not happening, everyone's doing something different. So for example, you know, EA Play is next Thursday and there's this new thing which is all about indie games and some other stuff that's on Saturday. And IGN has a whole bunch of stuff spread out over the entire summer. And Ubisoft is in the middle of July. You know, it's all spread out. So Jeff and I are going to do our very best to make sure... And who that knows when Nintendo's going to throw some news at us. Well, what it sounds like, reports are with Nintendo, is they're, they're not going to have, like, a big presentation. They're just going to give us announcements like they did with paper mario the other that's, week that's yeah that's what i was afraid so they may be just peppered in it throughout exactly this. and you know what it would it also wouldn't surprise me if say ubisoft or ea announced a nintendo game during their presentation yeah um you know which for example like if they did uh mario vs rabbits kingdom you know versus mario vs rabbits kingdom battle 2 which i it, for me is unquestionably happening because this is Ubisoft, they like making sequels, and, you know, but th that sounds like something that would be come out of a Ubisoft conference, you know? <laughs> so, keep it locked on Engage Family Gaming. Everybody, I really appreciate you joining us today. Like I said at the top of the show, 
uh, you know, we thought about not having the show this week, but we wanted to make sure we could be here to give everybody that human connection while they're trapped under the attack of the Fire Nation. Uh, we keep your eyes on our social media channels tomorrow. Where Which I, will... if you want to know where that reference comes from, go watch Avatar: The Last Airbender on Netflix. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. If you don't know what, <laughs> if you don't know what I mean when I say the Fire Nation is attacking, that means you need to watch Avatar, and that means you need to drop everything because Avatar is arguably the best animated series of all time i think it's pretty close um so but keep your eyes on our engaged family gaming uh social channels tomorrow where i'm going to spend a, a good portion of the day um highlighting black content creators in the board game space in the video game space whether they be big or small or somewhere in between and so Hopefully, you will be able to subscribe to them on YouTube or follow them on Facebook or YouTube, etc., or Twitter, and we'll be able to, you know, help give them some exposure. So, until next time, everybody, don't forget to get your family game on. We'll see you all next week. Bye now. Bye.